Thank you for joining us today in Jennifer Schaus and Associates complimentary webinar series. We are coming to you live from Washington, DC. This year on Fridays, we're covering the procurement playbooks. We'll take a deep dive into doing business with federal agencies and departments with our panelists. On Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, we'll cover the FAR supplements or procurement regulations for the agencies and departments. Fridays, we'll cover the business development and marketing aspects of the same agency and departments. The full schedule, the sign-up links, and the recordings are on our website. So here's just a glance at our Wednesday schedule, um, the topics we've covered thus far. This past Wednesday, we covered the federal employee health benefits. Um, and here's just an overview of what's coming next. And here's a glance at our Friday schedule. So um, again, today we'll be covering the playbook for federal employee health benefits. And now we'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors. Virginia PTAC at GMU offers free one-on-one -on -one counseling to firms in Virginia on federal, state, and local procurement topics. Online resources and group trainings are free with no restriction on business location. If you're interested in learning more, please use the links provided to explore what PTACs can offer. And a special thanks to our sponsor, the Federal Business Council. The FBC creates and manages virtual and in-person meetings and events to connect appropriate industry and government thought leaders, product providers, and solutions with government programs that use them. The FBC works with mission-specific programs for a variety of agencies to connect government and industry in the form of in-person and virtual conferences, training events, policy dialogue, and outreach. Over the last 40 years, the FBC has become a comprehensive resource for connecting industry and the federal government. And next, we'd like to thank Dastin. Dastin is an IT and cloud solutions provider working with corporations, the military, and government agencies to lower their costs, increase scalability, improve operational efficiency, and meet compliance regulations using targeted cloud-based solutions. Dastin is a certified partner of Oracle NetSuite, a premier tier Google Cloud partner, and a certified partner of Cisco, Virtue, AO Docs, and Authenticate. For more information about Dastin's services, you should email Joel, Joe Alston. And today we will be covering um, doing business with the federal employee health benefits. So let's meet our panelists. We'd like to thank Ms. Archiza Meehan with GovSpend for being with us. Archiza is here every Friday. Um, thank you so much. Hi, it's nice to be here. Thank you. Um. And we will also be going through the government perspective. Um, today, a government representative from Federal Employee Health Benefits was not available to speak with us, but Jennifer Schaus will be going through um, a deep dive of that government perspective for us. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Okay, and um, now we will look at the business opportunities and um, contracting trends within federal employee health benefits. Archiza, the floor is all yours. I'll be muting myself and just let me know when you're ready for the next slide. Yeah, let's go to the next slide. <laughs> so, um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Jennifer, for inviting me and GovSpan into this uh, very helpful playbook series. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Archisha Meehan. I uh, come from the FedMind side of the business. Um, and FedMind actually is a federal market intelligence platform that basically integrates the 18 data sets into one easy to use platform, allowing our clients uh, you know, visibility and understanding into what's happening at an agency or a contracting office or a program you know, who's winning the contracts, how should they work with the companies, uh, agencies, and create the market strategy. Uh, last summer, we were acquired by GovSpend, which is the largest provider of data 
within the SLED market. So today the GovSpend FedMind uh, uh, combination provides our clients the best in the federal and the SLED world. Um, so next slide. This is just a quick look at all our data sets uh, that we integrate data from, just to give you a nice, uh, you know, we're pulling opportunities from FPDS, uh, from SAM.gov, sorry, uh, and all the contract data from FPDS, but then we integrate it all into one easy to use platform. So next slide. Um, and then we typically work with uh, federal agencies as also the federal government contractors that uh, need uh, accurate data. So let's get into the next slide. Uh, which is about the F, uh, the Federal Employees Health Benefits Program. It actually is a program underneath the Office of Personnel Management. I did not know, but it is the largest employer-sponsored health insurance program in the world, which covers more than 9 million people, including the employees, annuitants, and family members. What it really does is it provides uh, options uh, across uh, the to to the um, uh, to the employees to select uh, the type of plan that, that they want whether it is a PPO plan or an HMO plan and they work with many um, insurance providers such as the uh, Kaisers and Aetnas of the world so uh, this is just a quick look at that what that program does uh, next slide in terms of you know where are the contracts what i really did was using i selected uh, or rather did a keyword search for federal employees health benefit or fehb and you could see that over the past four years the opm has awarded some contracts where uh, fehb is the key contract requirement um, and if you go to the next slide we, I actually went in to show you that in FY21, we had about $1.3 million that were awarded to three companies, Health Services Advisory Group, the Stone Peer Review Organization, and the Center for the Study of Services. Um, and the contract requirements really included the FEHB aggregator and medical review services as uh, you know, more description of what that contract is. In terms of NAICS code, you could see that the bulk of the contracts gone under the administrative management uh, NAICS code. So just this gives you a quick look at what the contract awards were for FY21. Um, next slide. In FY22 year to date, we actually have uh, some de-obligations, uh, which must be because of the contract closeouts, uh, you know, that's typically when we see the obligations. But again, you know, Health Services Advisory Group did get another half a million for this year. And the other uh, de-obligations are for the Keystone Peer Review Organization and the Independent Medical Expert Consulting Services. So that's those are the contract uh, transactions that we're seeing for FY21. Um, the next slide. Um, and I guess uh, now it goes to Jennifer. One thing I do want to keep in mind, I want you all to keep in mind is that I'm sure there are subcontract opportunities. I think the best thing would be to reach out to the insurance companies that might actually have, and I think maybe Jennifer's going to cover that. Um, but, you know, it, it's a very small program, um, but typically it is the insurance companies that might have the larger contracts. Uh, based on how the employees are selecting the insurance. But Jennifer, I'm going to hand, hand it over to you at this point. Not much information here, no open opportunities, nothing. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much, uh, Archie. It's a, a great presentation. And yes, as, well, um, as Madeline mentioned, um, we did not have a panelist from the federal government. So I'm just going to run through some things that uh, I learned because I didn't know much about FEHB. But uh, as a good point of reference, we did, um, as Madeline mentioned on Wednesday, we covered the FAR supplement on FEHB, and Susan Ebner uh, provided a lot of great information. It's a very detailed presentation. You can find that on our website and on our YouTube channel, but um, some of what I'm going to say is repetitive uh, from Wednesday, as well as what Archisa just covered here. Um, 
And so again, FEHB is uh, the largest uh, health insurance program in the world covering, uh, obviously, as you can read here, the 8 million federal employees and their, their families um, managed by OPM. And we can move to the next slide. Um, this is just kind of the, the genesis of how the program uh, came to its inception. Um, OPM used to be uh, the Civil Service Commission, uh, that was back in um, the 50s, and then um, the regulations are part of the CFR, the Code of Federal Regulations, and if you guys need to look anything up there, we've got all that um, uh, information here on this slide. Let's uh, move along, please. Um, so OPM uh, oversees and administers this program. So again, it's really just the carriers, uh, the insurance companies, uh, the Aetna's, uh, Care First, and Kaiser, and, and all the other um, health insurance companies. Um, obviously, those are, are big business, and uh, they can't do it all. So I believe that they will subcontract out a lot of work. So if you were um, you know, companies like, say, LabCorp or even um, medical providers, the doctors, the dentists, there would be some opportunities there. Um, and I would imagine that every couple of years, um, I can't remember how far back Archiza went in the, the contracts, I think it was three years, but if you guys uh, go on to usaspending.gov and want to look at some um, earlier trends, I would go back as far as you can. And maybe every, I don't know, I'm just going to take a guess here, maybe every five or 10 years, the government um, may reevaluate and conduct some uh, market analysis into uh, healthcare and providing some studies. So if your company provides those sort of services, there could be some opportunities there. Um, but I'm uh, digressing here. So OPM uh, does cover um, and administer, well, they administer this program. Um, they're gonna, uh, for open enrollments, they're going to cover these benefits and you know what uh, content can be on the brochures. They get into the uh, premium withholdings and contributions. Uh, we can move on to the next uh, slide. Um, and obviously there are um, FEHB laws. Um, and again, yeah, just uh, kind of reiterating here that they operate and administer uh, the program. And actually, let's go back uh, one slide. I'm sorry. And forward one. There we go. So I should have highlighted this, that they are reporting their findings to Congress. Um, now, I don't know that there could be, this is where I'm saying, like maybe every five or 10 years, perhaps they're going to hire an outside firm or so to look at, um, you know, the spend from the federal government on uh, on these programs to make sure that it's, you know, in sync with um, with the market uh, rates. And so these report findings, there could be, again, a contract opportunity there um, for some sort of uh, uh, marketing uh, analysis, financial analysis on healthcare costs. Um, this is just kind of a guess without having any uh, data in front of me from USA spending, but Again, uh, with a few clicks, you guys could probably find that information or work with Archiza at GovSpend to, uh, to get a, a report on that. Let's go ahead and move along. Uh, so again, OPM responsibilities, again, just uh, reiterating uh, what we've already said, um, working with the carriers, um, any sort of disputes on the claims, um, uh, and these sort of uh, administrative duties is what OPM is responsible for. And let's move to the next slide. And so those were the OPM responsibilities. Now the carriers, so these are the insurance companies. Uh, they're going to deal with actually providing the benefits. They contract directly with OPM. Um, just like as uh, anybody would in the private sector have evidence of um, having an ID card from your um, healthcare provider, uh, these will. The carriers provide that as well. And let's move to the next slide. Uh, they're also going to maintain and manage enrollment records. So there could be, again, opportunities there for subcontracting, uh, statistical analysis. Again, this is, I think, what could potentially be these reports to Congress. Um, they've got to ensure that their subcontractors are also, so any of the FAR flow down clauses. And again, that FAR supplement was covered on Wednesday for FEHB. So if you are a subcontractor to any of the healthcare companies, you want to make sure that you are in compliance as well. And uh, we will revert you back to the Wednesday webinar for those regulations. 
Uh, and let's move to the next slide. Um, so these are some of the partners. So because it is a, um, uh, the, the benefits are a cross-governmental uh, collaboration between multiple federal agencies. Um, and Department of Labor, even though OPM kind of manages uh, FEHB, uh, DOL is the managing partner for uh, benefits.gov. And let's look at who those partners are. The next slide, and that's just the list of them. You can find all this on the benefits.gov website. Um, and we can move to the next slide. And they're going to have two slides here for the benefit category. So this is uh, what the benefits.gov covers. Um, anything there from food stamps to um, disaster relief loans, um, employment, um, unemployment assistance. Uh, we can move to the next slide. All the way through to Social Security. So you can think of different aspects of um, uh, benefits and, and all of these um, pieces that they touch uh, within the federal government. So let's. Um, and now this, these are the slides that we typically cover in every uh, Friday webinar. So you've got your uh, link to the uh, benefits.gov, again, overseen by OPM. And um, again, if you're looking for any of these opportunities, it probably would behoove you to go on to uh, the OPM website and contact the Small Business Liaison uh, Office there, uh, or the OSDBU office there, I'm sorry. And that link will get you there. We'll move to the next one, which is the acquisition forecast. And so again, this um, is the forward-facing uh, forecast that OPM puts out. You'd have to individually scroll through there and search for FEHB opportunities, or as Archiza mentioned, uh, I think directly contacting the um, healthcare companies uh, after you first register on their website as a subcontractor and and kind of handle those uh, best practices before you contact them. And let's go to the next. And the scorecard is not applicable. Um, I don't think we have a scorecard for OPM. Um, so again, yeah, I would just uh, suggest reaching out to their small business office directly. And this might actually be it. Yes. Yes, thank you, Archiza and Jennifer. Um, and to our sponsors and everyone who attended today's presentation, the recording and slides will be available in the next 24 hours on our YouTube um, and our website. Um, we look forward to seeing you next week as we dig into the General Services Administration. The FAR supplement will be on Wednesday and the playbook will be on Friday. The registration links are also on our website. Thank you for attending.